Guys, we got some breaking news here. For a number of reasons, uh, we need our borders closed. There is a reason why uh, terrorists have been able to attack the United States so often. And I, I mean, I hate to say it, but people, some people from other countries hate America. Um, in this case here, uh, our, our southern border is wide open. Everybody knows that. Um, there are people that need to be held accountable for this. Um, and if, in my personal beliefs, the Democrats have uh, left the border open. Joe Biden has an open border policy because they want uh, some of those people to vote for them. Uh, and at the expense of our safety, um, it, they have decided to uh, you know, keep these uh, open border policies. This is absolutely disastrous and sickening uh, when you actually think about what's happening here uh, at our borders. Who's coming in? Uh, we'll never know until they get caught. I want to react to this Fox video here. Uh, it just broke, and I think it's really important for people to watch. Please watch all the way until the end. If you're new to this channel, like, share, and subscribe, uh, and hit the bell notification. It really helps us in the algorithm, guys. Please don't just come to my channel and take off. All right, watch a few seconds. People are very short. Um, I, I can see the retention in the videos that you guys don't watch the entire video. It is so important that you watch at least seven minutes of it. Can we just can we just watch the video? <laughs> I mean, I hate to sound like that, but it's true. Um, you know, a lot of people are just very uh, short. They have very short attention spans. Um, and that's why YouTube has created a, a shorts mechanism so people could uh, check out very short videos. But if you're here for the long content, please watch until the end or at least close to the end, uh, which helps out the algorithm um, and helps the videos to get suggested. A lot of technical stuff with YouTube, man. But I, if you if you hear me asking you for something, I'm really uh, needing your help with that. But listen, I'm going to go ahead and react to this video because it's, it's very, very uh, alarming. Um, I don't like to bring bad news, but it's. It, it is actually good news and bad news at the same time. Um, I want to let you take a look at what's going on here because it's very critical that everybody knows that you have to share. That if there was ever a video to share, this is the video that you should be sharing to people because this is very, it's getting, our safety is getting, um, we just, we're, if, if we don't share this word, if we don't, uh, you know, spread this message here and, and show everyone what's actually happened at the borders, they're not going to care. They're just not going to care because it's not hitting close to home yet, all right? But we don't we need a devastating attack to uh, for people to start paying attention. We need them to start paying attention now so they go out and vote, and they have a powerful reason why they're going to vote, okay? Here we go. In three of America's biggest cities, after walking right into our country across our southern border, Lucas Tomlinson is live with the breaking details. Lucas, what do we know? Well, good morning, Carly and Todd. Not only did those eight terror suspects enter the United States illegally through the southern border, they apparently received, quote, full vetting, according to our own Bill Malusian. The suspects are from Tajikistan, the landlocked country in Central Asia. It borders Afghanistan to the south and China to the east. Recall the main suspects in the terrorist attack. All right, pause for just a second. Now, he's going. He, he's taking off, but I want to slow it down for you guys, okay? So these eight terrorist suspects uh, come in. Uh, ISIS. So Tajikistan is Central Asia, right? As he said, um, if you if you look here on this map, I asked my wife about Tajikistan. Okay, there are a lot of Muslims there, and she's from Kyrgyzstan. I don't know if you guys can see that right up top there, uh, K Y R G Y uh, Z S T A N, Kyrgyzstan. Okay, these people live in the mountains. Uh, people of Kyrgyzstan are actually very kind. Um, let's see, you got so so Pakistan, Afghanistan, so. Uh, Tajikistan, she said the people there are extremely aggressive. Now, later on in this video, you're going to learn about what these people have already done. Um, and it's absolutely, you, I think you're going to be blown away, but, uh, you know, th this is very critical. So, so Tajikistan, um, people, th th those people are known to be very aggressive. And these are people coming across our borders, just walking in. And they were properly vetted, he said. Okay attack on the concert hall in Moscow that killed 145 people back in March were also from Tajikistan. See, the FBI and that's, that's what I was talking about. So, you know, 145 people uh, were killed in Moscow. Remember I told you guys that uh, back in a video I did, and you can go back and look. Um, I think the video is called like War is Not Good, War Not Good, or something like that, um, where uh, these, I think that they were supposed to be 
um, from Ukraine, and they went into that uh, town hall in Moscow. And I told you guys that my wife's cousins uh, actually performed there, and they were supposed to be there that night, but they weren't there. Thank God. Um, but these, so those guys that did that massacre, they were from Tajikistan. Okay. So these are people that just walk up into malls and town halls and just start shooting people, okay? Whew, this is crazy. So these these people are coming into our country right now. Biden's got open borders. Uh, Secretary Mayorka said, you know, basically uh, the borders are secure. They said, you know, there's, there's really no issue when they're doing everything that they can um, to stop the border crisis. I don't think they actually even call it a crisis yet, okay? But they're gaslighting us. They're telling us that, you know, everything's okay. Uh, it's, everything is not okay, guys. It's not okay. All right. Like the least we could do is start talking about this on the street. It, you're going to have to start doing things you never did before, like really talking to people about what's going on. All right. Addressing people that and, and using this, these stories to tell them exactly what's happening because people are still wanting to vote for Joe Biden. There should be nobody voting for Joe Biden. Okay. Uh, people are more concerned about their skin color. They're more concerned about God knows what else. Uh, other than, you know, keeping America safe. And it's crazy. And we're not, I'm not trying to scare you, but do we need to have to try to scare you? Uh, because these people are coming in. Do you have 2A? You carry your pistols around? I know I do, but everybody doesn't. DHS said in a statement to Fox, quote, the individuals arrested are detained in ICE custody pending removal proceedings. As the FBI and DHS have recently described in public and partner bulletins, the U.S. has been in a heightened threat environment. The FBI and DHS will continue working around the clock with our partners to identify, investigate, and disrupt potential threats to national security. Mm -hmm. The suspected terrorists were arrested in Los Angeles and across the country in New York and Philadelphia in recent days. According to the New York Post, who broke the story, quote, part of the investigation featured a wiretap which revealed one of the now arrested individuals was talking about bombs. Remember the Boston Marathon bombing? I'm afraid something like that might happen again or worse. Now, FBI Director Christopher Wray warned lawmakers back in April about what he described as the increased threat of a, quote, coordinated attack inside the U.S. after the Moscow massacre. And, of course, again, remember the suspects in that attack were also from Tajikistan, guys. All right, Lucas Tomlinson, live for us. Lucas, thank you. Let's bring in former Trump national security aide, John Elliott, to talk about this very concerning story. And, John, one of the most... Guys, I want you to listen to this guy right here very carefully um, because... The points that he's going to make are very important. Um, I, I, I just, you know, if, if we can get everybody to understand what's actually happening here and all the details, then people will take this election very seriously because there's so much at stake right now. And I know the Democrats always say that, you know, that our democracy is on the ballot. There's so much at stake in this election. They don't really mean that. All that they mean is they want to stay in power. All right, I'm, you know, I'm being truthfully honest with you. Uh, conservatives and Republicans, we're really concerned about this, okay? This is why. Now you can see why we're actually concerned about our borders, all right? Because people are just saying stupid things like, oh, leave the borders open, it's a free country, and stupid things like that, okay? There's a reason why we shouldn't do that, all right? There's a very good reason why we shouldn't do that because we need to be safe, okay? We need to keep our streets safe. We need to keep our malls safe. We need to keep our... Uh, Building safe, like our children safe, our schools safe, okay? That's the first thing, that's the first line of business, keeping everything safe. So I want you guys to pay close attention to what he's saying here because he's going to really, really get into some detail here. Concerning things about this is that these eight people who were uh, just arrested, they weren't gotaways. They received full vetting by CBP. Nothing was flagged, so they were welcomed into our country. Given the millions of other people who were treated the very same way, where does that leave us? Well, you're absolutely right, Carly. It's a disaster here. One of them, one of these eight, actually used the app. They have an app with your phone where you can actually go in and get pre-vetted. And so we're now having terrorists use the app to get into our country. They have an app where they can. Do you hear that? So all they need is to download an app, and they can get fully vetted. That means they can get checked out. They can. Oh, they're they're okay. They haven't. Uh, I, I don't. I don't even know how the vetting process goes. But if it's on an app. That should tell you everything you need to know, okay? It should really tell you everything you need to know. We're, we're down to apps. Guys, really, think about that. That's not security, okay? All right, first of all, there's hackers all over the internet. Second of all, an app is not going to vet anybody like a person would, like a group of uh, people would vet someone. 
All right. So this this tells you that our 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 uh, border security is completely overwhelmed when they have to depend on an app to vet people. All right. That means that there is millions and millions and millions of people coming in. I want you to listen to what he's saying here about President Trump because it's awesome. And so. Look, this is something where it's absolutely, this is an open border and the terrorists know it. And so whether it's the ISIS-K guys who, uh, terrorists who went after just a couple months ago in Moscow and killed over 100 people who are, who are there in, in Moscow, this is a, a similar thing could happen right now. And then just look at the White House right now. There was over, over the weekend, Carly, what there was in front of the White House is you had people putting all sorts of just defacing one of the statues, throwing bricks at, at uh, uh, the park police that were there. And so, look, this is something that not a single person got arrested there. So we, we've got people who can come that close to the White House, and now we have known terrorists. Just since, since Biden's been in office, Carly, what you've had is you've had 320 known terrorists have come in there and been stopped at the border. And that's just the ones that, that we've stopped. Look, if, if you're using... 320 terrorists. What could they possibly do? Okay, look what they look. What could they possibly do? 320 terrorists in the United States of America. They could absolutely wreak havoc. These people have a death wish. Okay, they hate America. All right, and they're, and a lot of them are willing to blow themselves up. Okay, I don't know if you guys know that, but they they they're really sick people. All right, this is the reason why we have borders. This is the reason why we need to have a border wall. All right. Xenophobia. Yeah, if xenophobia kiss my, you know what, boy. Using the app and you're coming in and you're a terrorist, then guess how many that we have that are just going right around the ice protection that we have now, the customs border protection. It's an absolute disgrace. Yeah, I fear it's just a matter of time before our intel services, which do an amazing job, by the way, not discrediting them, yeah. but they fail to catch one of these terror cells before it's too late. And that was a sentiment that the FBI director expressed some fear about when he uh, testified a few weeks ago. Listen. We've seen the threat from foreign terrorists rise to a whole nother level. On top of that, increasingly concerning is the potential for a coordinated attack here in the homeland. Not unlike the ISIS-K attack we saw at the Russia concert hall back in March. John, if Trump is elected, is there anything he can do to potentially substantially eliminate as much of this threat as possible? Or John, is it just too late? No, it's not too late at all because President Trump has said that we're going to de deport everybody once he gets in office. He said that we're going to start with the criminals, but that we're going to put everybody who's come in here illegally right. under Biden and earlier, the, the trickle right. that was there. Exactly. The criminals first. Okay, let's get all those guys out of here. All right. Let's get all those guys out of here. And all the people in your feelings talking about, I don't know, so mean to send them back. No, nobody care about none of that anymore, okay? Your safety is actually on the line, all right? Same thing you talk about guns, you know. Oh, no, we just don't need any guns. We need to get rid of them on the streets. Look, you mind your business, all right? We're going to keep everybody safe. How about that, okay? If you don't trust me with a weapons permit uh, and, and extensive background checks, if you still don't trust me, I'm sorry. There's something wrong with your head, okay? Because... You see what the government can actually do just to try to get votes, okay? You're going to have to – now we got to do a mass deportation hoping, praying that not one of these terrorists, out of all the terrorists, that, the gotaways, okay? Christopher Ray looks like he's overworked. He needs need a cup of coffee or something, all right? All these people are uh, pouring in, and we're being invaded. It is definitely an invasion. That's exactly what's happening. United States is in trouble, okay? United States is in trouble. I did say a lot of bad things about Russia, but I, I bet you one thing. The Russians will stick together, all right? Their women are stronger than most of our men over here in dresses, all right? That's what's going on right now. So if they listen to the conservatives on our policy and leave us alone and let us do what we need to be doing, the place will be safe. We'll keep our country safe, all right? I don't want to hear anybody's feelings when, we're, when we got to deport people, all right? We're going to keep reporting on it and let you know what's going on compared to the wave that's going on right now. But he is going to deport these terrorists. He's going to find where they are. And what President Trump has said is that the police know where these guys are. And, yes. and with the intelligence, you're absolutely right that the intel resources that we have, kudos to the FBI for finding these guys. And it was a wiretap reportedly that found them. So good, good on them. And so what President Trump will do, number one, he'll close the border so they won't get in. And those who are here, he's going to make sure that they are deported right away or actually that they're arrested and that they're prosecuted and then possibly deported yeah. after that. But we need these guys in jail is yeah. what we need. Without question. And there's also everything that's going 
going on in Afghanistan right now. I think that everyone should understand that there are people trying to come into our country with the intention just to get here and cause a terrorist attack. OK, uh, we have to assume that there's no way in the world we could just say, oh, everybody's coming in. Nobody's thinking about doing anything like that. Who would want to, uh, you know, hurt anyone in America? Uh, who would want to hurt a little child? Who would want to shoot a child? Who would want to traffic children? Who would want to do that? Uh, evil people. This is a spiritual warfare that we're in. OK, you're going to be hearing that a lot because nobody can explain the devilish things that are happening. All right. Especially at our borders. No one can explain it. I bet you I bet you that President Biden could explain it because he needs voters uh, for the Democrat Party. So they're willing to let anybody in and, and try to convince them that, uh, to vote for Democrats because the Democrats let them in. All right. That's their game plan. All right. And keep Donald Trump off the campaign trail and lock him up. You know, but the one man that's saying we need to get the criminals out of our country, we need to keep our country safe. Everyone's attacking him on the left. It should literally tell you everything that you need to know. All right. If you don't get it now, then you're not going to get it. All right. If for my black people out there, okay, the people uh, that still are undecided or the st still, uh, you know, uh, you know, think that Trump's some sort of racist uh, Hitler. Uh, let me speak directly to you. All right. Because I'm meeting a lot of people in the streets that actually feel this way in West Virginia. All right. Their skin color is the most important thing to them. Uh, voting based on, uh, you know, their how black and brown they are is the only important thing on the ballot for them. And democracy. That, those are the only things that they are thinking about. Half of them can't even spell democracy. Uh, the other part of them, voting on, based on their skin color, it's absolutely pathetic. Okay, if you're holding on to the memory of slavery when you were never a slave, probably nobody in your family was a slave. Actually, probably some of them were slave owners. Until you do the history and find that out, it actually should humble you if you uh, uh, had ancestors that were slaves. It should humble you even further. You should look around and see how fortunate you actually already are. Because you got a lot of millionaires and billionaires still butthurt about slavery. It makes no sense since so if you want to vote for biden stay home please all right just stay home uh, and don't do that to us man because this is the kind of policy that we're talking about leaving the borders open that one right there completely will destroy america if it continues all right and cripple our economy which means that we won't be able to afford things which means we're just out of luck we're going to look like venezuela in a couple of years all right if Joe Biden stays in office for one more year, it, we're done. He's going to collapse everything. I promise you that. So if you're undecided, just stay home. D do us all a favor, just stay home. Because you got a lot of weird people, and I think you know who I'm talking about, men that dress up like they're not supposed to, biblically, uh, and women who dress up like they're not supposed to be, biblically. Okay, we got a lot of those people saying weird things, and they care about some weird things, but they don't seem to care about terrorists. They don't seem to care about uh, the fentanyl crisis. They don't seem to care about the cost of anything going up out of this world. They don't care about any of that because their feelings are involved. Later, they'll say, oh, my goodness, it's so unaffordable. I can't believe it. They'll cry later. All right. They're not crying yet, but it has to get really bad for those people. You got to understand because they're using their emotions to vote. Now, ISIS-K has been on the rise in Afghanistan since our withdrawal, and now that we're not there, we have to use this over-the-horizon approach. Given how catastrophic our withdrawal was and, and the loss of life that took place, it doesn't seem like uh, sending troops back now is on the table. But given the fact that terror organizations uh, are on the rise there, would it be safer for us here at home if we did have a presence there? Well, you're absolutely right, Carly. What we did there under Biden is that we gave up Bagram Air Force Base. When I was at the National Security Council supporting President Trump, he had the withdrawal from Afghanistan for the U.S. forces to, on a glide path where we would keep Bagram. And now you know who's controlling Bagram is the Chinese. And so you're absolutely right that we need a, a greater capability to go after ISIS. We still have un -over, over the horizon capability. But had Biden not given away Bagram, it would have been much, we would have been much safer and could have attacked ISIS K right where they are. And they would be on the run and not plotting attacks by coming through our 
southern border. Meantime, John, in just a couple of hours, President Biden will be headed to Italy for the G7 summit as an Israel-Hamas ceasefire deal, as well as China, Russia, Ukraine, all these major, major foreign policy issues loom large. What deliverables must Biden walk away with in order for this G7 to be considered a success, John? Well, what's happening here, I, I know one thing's for certain is that after what happened yesterday with Hunter Biden, he's not going to give, be giving the leaders parenting tips, and he's also not going to be giving them any talk on gun control. So look, what he is going to do is he's going in there, and these are all globalists who are very afraid of President Trump coming in. I think yes. Laura's program last night talked about exactly how, the, how so many of these leaders are worried about what's happened in terms of, of more centrist forces that are coming in, more right-wing forces that are, or just right-of-center <clears throat> voices that are coming in. So what he has to do is he has to push back on them, and he has to show that somehow he's able to make it across the finish line because they're ready to bail on him right now. And they, they need, they're asking for more money for Ukraine, but they're ready to bail on him. And you know what they're telling him, Todd, is they're telling him that, that hate to break it to you, Biden, but they're looking at the polls that he's looking at, and they say there's a steep discount right now on Hunter Biden's art from anybody who wants influence from right. their countries. Yeah. And Israeli media is also reporting that Hamas just rejected key parts of the U.S. ceasefire deal. So back to the drawing board on that one as well. John, thank you so much for. This is crazy, man. This is wild. This is absolutely wild. And so, so the globalists are going to be getting together for the G7 uh, summit, uh, and they're ready to bail on Joe Biden. These people are so weak, man. They are so weak. I can't believe we let them go this far. We let them get this far. They should be terrified of President Trump. They absolutely should be terrified of President Trump. Why do I say that? Because he wants to undo everything that they've done, okay? Jeopardizing our safety, raising the cost and everything, killing our economy. People can't survive in this. And it's very clear and apparent. Now, Hunter Biden's been uh, found guilty on the gun charges, but yet his dad wants to take away your gun rights. Like, how hypocritical is that? It's absolutely crazy. These, I'm telling you, these people are the ones doing the things that they're accusing us of. They're always doing that. Guys, I, I can go on a long rant about this, but our safety is very important. I, I took this very serious. <sighs> I think that, um, you know, you got a lot of gun lobbyists out there. You know, they want you to give up your guns. They want, don't ever do it. Don't ever give up your guns. Don't ever give up your safety. All right, this is a, one of the main reasons why our borders are wide open. You don't know what can happen. Wouldn't you be rather prepared? Go out and get you some gun education classes. Go train. All right, you got a lot of beta soy boys telling you, uh, you know, you got to get rid of guns. Uh, you know, it's stupid. It's absolutely stupid. Uh, that will never get you anywhere except killed, potentially. All right? That will never get you anywhere except wiped off the face of the earth, potentially. All right? So it's not a question on your safety. Uh, you call the cops, they're not going to be getting there anytime soon to save your life. All right, so you take your matters in your own hand, do things the right way legally, all right, not like Hunter Biden, all right? Nobody should be smoking crack and owning a gun, all right? And, and their father shouldn't be a president if they're doing that, plain and simple. Guys, like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for tuning in. This is Andre with Yup, I Said It. Please be sure to hit that bell notification and share these videos. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I love you.